Hi everyone, I am here with a Bible reading. We got one more reading for this year tomorrow and then we'll be starting all over with the New Testament if you would like to join us. We will be starting with the book of Matthew in the new year. So let me get Sherm ready here and get you guys ready and we'll get started. Today we're on Revelation chapter 21. We are on Psalm 149. Got it? <laughs> and we are on Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 24. A lot of Proverbs today. We'll be reading in the New International Version if you'd like to follow along. If um, you want to follow along online, you can go to BibleGateway.com. That's the same thing that I use. Okay, Sherm, you ready? Mm. All right. Let's get down here and get started. We'll be talking about a new heaven and a new earth. Wonderful, happy things. How wonderful it will be. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and to them were the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city. Its gates and its walls, the city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide as high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. 
The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious jewel. Can you imagine how beautiful that's going to be? Wow. Colors we've never even seen before. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrys chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jasoneth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each gate made a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that is where we're going to stop today. That is Revelation chapter 21. We have one more uh, chapter to go of Revelation. Then we will have finished the New Testament and we'll be starting over again. So let's read our Psalm, Psalm 149. Just, just close your eyes and picture what I read about the new Jerusalem, the new place where we'll be living with God and Jesus themselves. All those precious stones, some colors we've never even seen. How beautiful and shiny it's going to be. And the floor, like clear glass, but it's gold. Just imagine how beautiful that's going to be. Pearls as the gates. Wow. We can't even imagine. Truthfully, we can't even imagine what it's going to be like. It's much greater than our imaginations. Okay, Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his faithful people. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with victory. Let his faithful people rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron, to carry out the sentence written against them this is the glory of all his faithful people. Praise the Lord. And now we are going to read all these Proverbs here. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 24. You ready, Sherm? This is the epilogue, The Wife of Noble Character. You ready? Sure. Mm -hmm. A wife of noble character who can find... She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she planted a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. 
When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. Okay, that was the wife of noble character. That was our Bible reading for today, guys. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. All right, so our question for last night was, who were God's archangels? There was three, but one is no longer there, no longer an archangel. And the answer to that is Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. Yes, Lucifer, Satan, was one of God's archangels. He was a very high angel. God loved him, and he had beauty. He was beautiful. But he wanted to take over God. He wanted to be God. So now he's Satan, and he's all mean and evil. He just does bad things, and some of the angels up there were on his side. And God sent them down from heaven, too. That's why it's called fallen angels. They done bad with Satan, and God took them out of heaven, threw them down. So, Lucifer, now Satan, the devil, is what the fallen angels are with him, and, you know, they're the bad. Which is a lot of bad in this world. Satan's the biggest liar, and he does the most evil things to people, and gets people to do the most evil things. <laughs> the question for tonight is how many wives did Solomon have King Solomon back then they could marry as many wives as they wanted King David had many as well ain't legal to do that here anymore anyway I don't know about other countries I think you still can I'm pretty sure you still can um, <laughs> but there were a lot in the Bible there were a lot, trust me. So, how many wives did Solomon have? That is your question for tonight. So let's go to our prayer requests. I'm trying to think if I needed to put anybody else on. I'm going to real quick, I'm sorry. because it really makes me very, very sad. And I wished I could do something about it. We'll talk about that last. Please pray for Lonnie Doles Jr. and his family. Please pray for Jimmy Myers. He's having to work a lot. Helping, you know, with the moving and everything. But his headaches and everything seem to be under control. His uh, neurological neurologist he's going to on his birthday actually on the 8th which is also our sister in Christ Michelle Watkins birthday as well so we find out what's going to happen there they're going to do surgery on his brain or you know whatever they're going to do please pray for Abby Myers and Rhonda Karshner they're planning on being out of there, I think, by Friday this week, out of their home. They just found out there was a big gas leak under the house. Gas got in the house where mom's son-in-law unplugged the dryer, and it was full of gas, and they had to try to air it out. So now they have no gas, so they don't got no heat, and they can't cook because everything was gas. And it's going to be like in the 20s at night. And both of them, Abby and Mom, are both always cold anyways. Abby's got an electric blanket, but I know she'll still be cold and Mom will be freezing. I tried to get them to come out here and stay until they moved in there, but or as long as they wanted, as long as was allowed. But they're going to stay there until they get moved out on Friday, I guess. Please pray for Sherman Crabtree. 
Please play, pray for Layla and her son Emil. Please pray for Michelle Watkins, Judy Thompson, Cindy and Jim Welsh, Dora Carper, Randy Post, Barb Post, Melody Stanley. I sent my sister home four trash bags, four, three trash bags and a big, big uh, Christmas bag for the kids and for her and her, for Barb. But I never, and her husband, but I never did hear anything. So I don't know if they liked the gifts or if they even got them yet. But she wanted to tell me something about her mom before I found out. But I've been, I messaged her and she never wrote back and she's been online so I don't know what's going on. It's never anything good. Please pray for April and Linda Thacker. And please, lastly of all, pray, I know a lot of people don't like to pray for animals, but please pray for my mom's dog, Sammy. My mom's not the kind of person that keeps a dog in the house, so Sammy's just been tied up outside to her box. She kept her in the house when she was little because she got her as a little puppy. She's a purebred black lab. But she's been tied up out there and anyway, my sister won't let my mom take her and put her in the yard down there. She wouldn't let her plant her bush, her almond tree that I got her either, so she had to plant it at my aunt's house. But she ain't allowed to take Sammy with her, so her son-in-law is supposed to take Sammy to the pound tomorrow. I wish I could take her, but we're not allowed. You're only allowed to have a dog here up to 40 pounds, and Sammy's a lot bigger than that and she's spayed and everything. I feel so bad for her. She's going to be so scared. Please pray that she gets a good family and gets to get inside. I would take her if I was allowed. Breaks my heart. She ain't known nobody else. She never really got to play or anything because she was always just tied up. Breaks my heart seeing that and just thinking about it. So please just pray that Sammy gets a good home and that they do take her to the pound and not just dump her out somewhere. Because that's what I'm afraid of. Because at least at the pound she'll get fed and stuff. If she's just dumped out, she won't. She'll be starving and looking around. It's scared to death. It's just horrible. Anyway, if you guys would like to subscribe, please, the link will be on the uh, bottom left corner. And if you would like to see another random video, it'll be in the top right. And again, our homework is how many wives did Solomon have? I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus and God willing. We'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye guys. God bless.